This is the brand new Velotrek Thunder One, and it just might be my new favorite e-bike. <laughs> It's a whole lot less E and a whole lot more bike. I need to taste what I'm waiting for. You don't see wires. You don't see a massive battery that screams, look at me, I'm an e-bike. It's electric, you idiot. No, you just see a sexy road bike that when I get on this thing and ride, as an avid road cyclist, it puts a huge smile on my face. Let me show you. Come on and make me jealous. You've got to turn it on. You know I love to chase, but I can only that I love doing on this bike is using the built-in Garmin style bike mount, which allows me to have a very crystal clear display while riding. So the bike arrived in one box, very nicely packaged with plenty of padding. Everything that you need was included, including the hardware to be able to assemble it. The assembly was very straightforward. I'm gonna show you how easy it is here. The power supply was even branded with Velatric, which I love to see. I just put on the kickstand here, which is optional. I do like having it on there just to easily stand up the bike when it is parked and then put on the pedals left and right and the seat post. Now the seat on this bike is pretty impressive. I found it to be sleek and comfortable, especially on longer rides. Put the front wheel on there, has nice disc brakes, mounted the headlight and then attached the rear light and reflector. I decided to move that on down there a little bit. Lots of adjustability or to your liking, but here it is all assembled. They do give you some instructions here on the different pedal assist modes. That's just a sticker that you can remove. And this is the thumbprint reader to lock and unlock your bike. I used a spare iPhone 14 Pro Max case from ESR that I had to attach the Garmin style mount to the back of it. You do want to adhere that on there and give it about 24 hours before you actually use it on your bike, but it does lock nicely in place there. And then I downloaded the Velatric app, which is going to allow me to get all of the features of this Thunder One e-bike. You just connect via Bluetooth, set up your account, and then it'll walk you through the steps on how to charge the bike for the first time and do any firmware updates, which of course this bike did need a firmware update as soon as I connected it, but not a big deal. You can get the pairing code right on your bike. So find your pairing code. I'm just hiding it here because I don't know if it's uh, gonna make my bike vulnerable for you guys to see my pairing code, but there is a unique pairing code on your bike. Complete any firmware updates, follow all instructions and get that battery fully charged before you use it for the very first time but I found it to be fairly charged when it came right out of the box. You can also rename your bike to whatever you want to call it. Of course, I'm gonna give it a little man shed touch to the name of my e-bike. Next, I programmed the fingerprints that I wanted to be able to unlock the bike. It's very similar to programming your iPhone fingerprint reader when we had those back in the day. You just touch the fingerprint reader with whichever digit you're programming at the time and lift it up and put it back down multiple times until it registers. And I went ahead and did my index finger first and then I did a second fingerprint. You can actually have up to 12 in there. I did my thumb. Now, if you have another person that's gonna be borrowing the bike, maybe a sibling or a family member, you could of course program different fingerprints. So not everybody had to have the mobile app in order to unlock the bike. They can unlock it just with their fingerprint, which is really, really cool. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button and the like button. Be sure to also turn the bell notifications on. I've got a lot more cool man shed approved products that I'm bringing you guys, not to mention all of my shed builds. I'm currently building a brand new shed. I'm gonna bring you guys along for that journey and I've got some really cool stuff in store. So hit that subscribe button, appreciate you guys. You've got a ton of options in here. Of course, you've shows your range depending on the boost mode or the pedal assist mode that you have the bike in. You have the ability to lock and unlock your e-bike directly from the mobile app. And I love that the Thunder One has this integrated Garmin style mount on it. It will show you your mileage output. It'll show you your range. I'm only on 30% battery because I've been riding this thing around enjoying it. But even at 37%, it's giving me an estimated 25 mile range. Now that is based on the pedal assist mode that you have the bike in. So if I were to increase the amount of pedal assist from the bike, it would change then to lower your range, which I love that a lot. I haven't seen that a lot of e-bikes that based on the boost mode that you have your e-bike in, it's going to change your mileage range. 
Now, if we go into the Find My Bike, you can actually locate, geolocate your bike. So in the case of a theft or a situation or you don't know where you put your bike, you can find it on the mobile app and it will accurately locate it because the bike has built-in GPS to find it. The Thunder One does not work with the Find My app on your iPhone, but it does do a powerful job of locating your e-bike or showing you where the location is based on the built-in GPS. If you go into bike settings, there's a number of options in here that you can choose from. You can select your default riding mode, and this is gonna change a lot of the dynamics of the torque sensing and the power output, uh, regardless of the pedal assist mode that you're in, and make a more efficient use of the battery power depending on the type of trail that you're on. So if you're like me, you can just go full-blown max mode all the time, or if you want to be more efficient with your battery use, you can go to city mode and switch your riding mode to city. You can also update your firmware in here. You have the light sensing headlight. You can turn that on or off. That just means that you're gonna have auto headlights. So when it starts to get dark outside, your headlight is going to automatically turn on. You have theft alert, which is gonna send you a notification. When your bike is moved, when it's locked, you're gonna get an instant notification on your phone. I also like the auto lock feature. When you've come to a stop, if you forget to lock your bike, you can have it automatically set to lock when you have your mobile app installed and paired to the bike. As long as your phone is within proximity of the bike, it's going to automatically unlock your bike, making it ready to ride because it recognizes you as the user. So just a variety of options inside the mobile app, which I find to be very intuitive, very easy to use. You can tap unlock and now you're in full blown riding mode and it's going to track everything for you. It's going to track you how, how far you've ridden, how many calories you've burned, the time that you've been riding and a lot of additional information. Plus it connects, if you give it authorization, you, it connects directly into your Apple Health app and will synchronize all of your calorie burn and all the health data. This Velatric road bike is truly something that you've got to experience to believe it. So I'm doing my best here in this video to give you guys a feel for what it is like to ride the Bellatrix Thunder 1. The motor is a 350 watt motor with 600 watt peak power and outputs an impressive 42 newton meters of torque. It is a class one e-bike, meaning that it will pedal assist up to 20 miles an hour, and it is pedal assist only, no throttle, which in this case, not a big deal. Some of the much beefier, heavier e-bikes, you really want that throttle to be able to just throttle your way to speed. But this e-bike truly feels more like a streamlined road bike, similar to my non-pedal assist road bike that is extremely light and aerodynamic and just kind of feels like it wants to go. I'm getting some of those same feelings riding this e-bike. The only difference is this one actually will propel itself. The Velatric Thunder 1 has superior craftsmanships with proper beaded weld joints that are hand finished. And this frozen blue color Love it. Just that beautiful gradient from that light to a little bit darker stone blue just has that additional sense of luxury and quality to it that you're not going to find in similar priced e-bikes. Speaking of price point, the Thunder One comes in at $1,799 US dollars. In considering all of the facts with this bike and the craftsmanship of it and the build quality of it, I'd say it's very much in line. I like the size of tire that's on this road bike as well. There are no shocks, of course, suspension at all on this bike, but even on this very dated, bumpy asphalt road, I'm definitely feeling some of the bumps, but nothing to the extent that I would on some other bikes that are 100% rigid and have no flexibility to them. This bike actually is very well balanced and has a little bit of flex to it. It features hydraulic brakes, which are good, and they're not squeaky and noisy. A lot of these e-bike brakes right out of the gate, you've got to do some alcohol rubbing on the disc to get them to quiet down sound like a dying dinosaur from Jurassic World or something. There are also aren't any rattles or noises and even similarly priced e-bikes on the market because the assembly or craftsmanship is just rushed overall. This bike just feels super solid underneath me and I'm six foot seven, definitely on the taller end of the sizing chart. This is a large size frame and it is rated up to six feet tall, but I feel very comfortable on it. Maybe a little bit heavy weighted on the handlebars just because I'm leaning over a little bit but that could be easily adjusted this definitely has more of a road bike style seat to it 
but I still find it surprisingly comfortable. At this point, I'm really trying hard to think of things that I don't like about this bike, and I'm coming up a little bit short. We've even got bottle cage mounts down here, which you're not seeing on a lot of e-bikes. You've got the double water bottle mounts down there, and I love that it has the security features built into it. I've got fingerprint unlocking, I've got app control, and GPS location, along with security alerts in case someone tries to steal your bike. Now locking your bike, of course, does not mean that it won't get picked up and stolen. So I still encourage you to use some type of a bike lock to securely lock it to a bike rack or a pole or something like that. If your bike was stolen, you could certainly track it via GPS. And I never recommend or condone you going after it alone, but it's great information that you can provide the police and let them do their job. Probably because I'm more used to a road bike for my regular cycling, that I do kind of wish that this had more of a road bike handlebar, but I do get that this is meant as really a commuter bike. It's a very stylish commuter bike. If you're in college, if you're at, you know, work downtown and just need an easy commuter bike, this really is the bike for you because you've got not only a good looking road bike, that is lightweight, easy to carry, easy to maneuver, and gets you from point A to point B very comfortably, you really do need to look at the Velotrek Thunder One. 